Alright guys, now I know this is very, very different, but I think it's honestly insanely interesting. Recently, Tucker Carlson had an interview with Donald Trump, and I think this interview needs to be seen because it's very, very important, and overall just very educational. But yeah guys, leave a like on the video and subscribe with notifications so you don't miss the latest updates. But yeah, just take a look at this interview. It's really, really powerful to say the least. Mr. President, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Why aren't you at the Fox News debate tonight in Milwaukee? Well, you know, a lot of people have been asking me that, and many people said you shouldn't do them, but you see the poll have come out and I'm leading by 50 and 60 points and you know some of them are at one and zero and uh, two and I'm saying do I sit there for an hour or two hours whatever it's going to be and uh, get harassed by people that shouldn't even be running for president should I be doing that uh, and a network that isn't particularly friendly to me frankly you know they uh, they were back in Ron de Sanctimonious like crazy and now they've given up on him I mean he's it's a lost cause it reminded me very much of 2016. You know, in 2016, I went through the same stuff and had to fight them all the way. And then they became very friendly after I won or just about when I was winning. But I just felt it would be uh, more appropriate not to do the debate. I don't think it's uh, right to do it. Uh, if you're leading by 50, 60, I have one problem leading by 70 points. And I'm saying, why am I doing it? And I'm going to have eight people, 10 people, whoever made the debate, I don't know how many it is, but I'm gonna have all these people screaming at me, shouting questions at me, all of which I love answering, I love doing, but it doesn't make sense to do them. So uh, I've taken a pass, as it's, you probably noticed. Oh, I, I did, <laughs> I'm grateful that you did. Um, it's interesting though, because you spent a lot of your career in television. Yeah. Um, you would a top show in television on NBC. Um, but you don't feel the need now running for president to do television, obviously. Do you think television is declining? Well, according to a poll that I guess we just saw, it just came out where it's down like 30, 35 percent. But I think they were talking referring to cable. I think cable's down because it's lost credibility. MSNBC, or as they say, MSDNC, is so bad. It's so wrong what they write and what they do and what they say. It's, you know, it's fake news, as I said. I think I came up with that term. I hope I did because it's a good one. It's not tough enough anymore. It's corrupt news. You know, really what you do is call corrupt news, but somehow that doesn't play as nicely. But uh, it is corrupt news. So you have uh, MSNBC and you have CNN, who's absolutely doing no ratings at all. I mean, they're dead. But they're doing none because they don't have credibility. They really don't have credibility. Fox is way down, as you know. And uh, the good old days are... are Long ago, I will say this, uh, it could come back, but they have, they just don't have a lot of credibility. Tucker, you know that perhaps better than anybody. I think it was a terrible move getting rid of you. You were number one on television and all of a sudden you're, we're doing this interview, but we'll get bigger ratings using this crazy forum that you're using than probably, uh, probably the debate or competition. Who, when, you, when you say there are people on stage who shouldn't be running for president, who do you mean? Well, I don't want to really use names, but it wouldn't matter too much. A guy like, uh, I call him Ada Hutchinson. It's Asa, but I call him Ada. Uh, Why do you I call him Ada? I, you know, I could tell you, but I don't want to get myself in a little trouble. <laughs> but he's weak and pathetic, and he was, uh, I never understood the guy. I never knew him. He was the governor of Arkansas. I did not a very popular guy. I don't know how he, but that state is such a great state. The people are so incredible. Yes in that state, and they love me and I love them. How does this guy get elected governor of Arkansas? But he's nasty always and uh, has been. Uh, a guy like Chris Christie, the guy left with a 8%, think of it, 8% approval rating in New Jersey. Now he's running for president. And he runs solely on the basis, oh, let's get Trump. Let's, he's like a savage uh, uh, maniac. He's like a lunatic. And that's all he talks about. His poll numbers are very, very low. He's about 2%. What's he like? You know him well. No, I've, had, I've been friendly with him over the years, but I couldn't give him a, a job because I just never trusted him very much. Uh, I was just never one of his people that really trusted him. I never gave him the job. And that's one of the reasons he feels so hurt and so betrayed. And I understand that. I really do. I understand it. But I never gave him. You know, he wanted to be different things. He was looking at different... Uh, elements of the administration and we decided uh, I decided just I didn't want to I didn't want to do it and now I'm glad I did because you see but you know we had some some great people I had great people we'll have even better people if we do this because now I know Washington before I didn't know Washington the election was rigged it was a rigged election but and with COVID they use COVID to cheat in a lot of different things and we have so much on it it's like so easy 
But we had judges that didn't want to look. We had people didn't want to get involved. They said they, they could. You, you, he's a conspiracy theorist if you say anything about the election. But I have never seen or any kind of an athlete. You look at him. He can't walk to the helicopter. He he walks. He can't lift his feet out of the grass. You know, it's only two inches at the White House, right? That's not a lot. But you watch him, and it looks like he's walking on toothpicks. So, and then you see him in the beach where he can't lift a chair. You know, those chairs are meant to be light, right? They're like two ounces. Yeah. You lift him up. He can't lift the chair. He can't walk to the chair. And I, I don't know what they're doing with the beach. You know, this beach is seeming to play a big role, but they love pictures of him on the beach. I think he looks terrible on the beach. He looks terrible on the Skinny beach. Skinny legs. Well, he can't walk through the sand. You know, sand yeah. is not that easy to walk through. But when he walks through it, he can't walk through the sand. And there's somebody in there that thinks he looks fabulous at the beach. I think he looks horrible at the beach. Plus, the beach doesn't represent what a president's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be working. He's supposed to be getting us out of that horrible, horrible war that we're very much involved in with Russia and Ukraine. You could do that. You could do that very easily. I believe you could do that very... I don't believe he could do it because he's just incompetent. But that's a war that should end immediately, not because of one side or the other, because hundreds of thousands of people are being killed. Can you imagine you're in an apartment house and rockets are going into that building and blowing it up and knocking it down? And who, who can, why, why should anything, why should anybody, human beings, these are human, whether they're Russian or Ukrainian or whatever they are, it's got to be stopped. And it can be stopped very easily. It would have never started. If I were president, it would have never started but the big ones and the bigger the tougher the leader you know it's like sort yeah. of I guess maybe that's the way it's supposed to be but I got to know President Xi of China and Putin and Kim Jong-un North Korea did a great job with North Korea kept us out of a nuclear war we would have 40,000 dead soldiers right now they'd drop a nuke right on top of the military base but we have 40,000 soldiers over there and I did great. I got along with him great. It's a good, that's a positive. You know, the press said, he said nice things about Kim Jong-un. I also said horrible things at the beginning. Horrible enough that he wanted to talk. And we talked and we met in Singapore. We met actually twice. And we had uh, unbelievable meetings. I know him very well. We were in great shape with him. Uh, the, well, what do you think he and Xi and Putin think of Biden? I think they can't believe it. I think they probably say this is some kind of a... System, you know, they had great respect for our country. They respected me. They had great respect for our country when I was there. Every one of them. Look, uh, if you go to if you go to North Korea, you take a look at what happened. You know, the Olympics was dead. South Korea spent billions on the Olympics. Nobody was going to go. They didn't want to get blown up. They called me and they said, "We are going to let the Olympics proceed." This is North Korea. I said, you should go into the Olympics. Put your athletes in. It wasn't like, you know, they were big on athletes because, you know. Famine. But they went in and they actually participated. And within about two days, the entire thing was sold out. And if it wasn't me, that would have never happened. But I got along very well with him, and that's a positive thing. He, he does have massive nuclear power, by the way. And if Hillary would have gotten in or... If the Obama thought process continued, it would have been a nuclear war absolutely with North Korea. He was, he was expecting to go into a war and an, it would have been a nuclear war. What, so do you think the rest of the world looks on at Biden and thinks someone else has got to be running the government? Well, somebody else has to be. Uh, I don't think he's capable of doing no. anything. Look, when I debated him, I said, how come, and this was in front of probably not a friend of yours, Chris Wallace. He was the moderator. Not a friend. I said, why did, why is it? He wants to be Mike, but he doesn't have the talent. It's one it's of those- bitchy little, little man. He wanted to be his father, but he didn't have the talent of his father. His father was great. His He's father- a little fussy man. His father interviewed me in 60 <laughs> Minutes. It was actually a 10. Can you believe it? No, I totally believe it. His father got, had talent, at no, least. I may have been the only guy that he gave a good 60 Minutes to. He was rough. Really? His father was tough. He was great, though. He was great at what he did. But uh, Chris Wallace was so upset he was guarding this guy who wouldn't do a show, by the way. You know, he wouldn't do I figured I didn't mind Chris Wallace because uh, he wouldn't do Biden wouldn't do a show. And it was very obvious. You know, he kept asking him and asking, but he wouldn't do the show. So I figured he's got to like me. But he came from a different planet. But remember when I asked the question, why is it that the mayor of Moscow's wife is allowed to give you three and a half million dollars 
Don't forget, that was brought up. Now it's brought up all the time, but that was brought up by me long before anyone ever heard of it. I said, the mayor of Moscow is I've given you three and a half million dollars. What did you do to deserve three and a half million dollars to Biden? And Chris Wallace said, this doesn't, uh, this has nothing to do with the debate. <laughs> I mean, he uh, that you would have a runway that that's uh, that's why that's is China testing. allowed to conduct imperialism in our hemisphere? Well, yeah, and it's far beyond Cuba. It's all over South America. Yeah, in the Caribbean. So we built a thing called the Panama Canal. We lost thirty-five thousand people to the mosquito, you know, malaria. Yeah, we lost thirty-five thousand people building. We lost thirty-five thousand people because of the mosquito. Vicious. They had to build under nets. It was. One of the true great wonders of the world, as he said, one of the nine wonders of the world. No, no, it was one of the seven. It was, happened a little while ago, you know. He says nine wonders of the world. You could make nine wonders. He would have been better off if he stuck with the nine and just said, yeah, I think it's nine. But this is one of the true seven wonders of the world. And you take a look at the Panama Canal. It was such, such an incredible engineering marvel. We sold it under Jimmy Carter. We sold it to Panama for one dollar. The following day, they quadrupled the amount of money that ships had to pay to get across. They didn't lose one ship. And now they've made it much bigger, and now they've widened it. They've doubled it, right? They've more than doubled it. And it's one of the most profitable things any time. It, it's, it's just incredible, right? We gave it away for one dollar. China now controls it. They actually control the Panama Canal. They run it, they control it. And we shouldn't let that happen. And we can't let China be in Cuba. And they'll get out. If I'm president, they'll get out. Because I had a very good relationship with President Xi, but he respected this country, he respected me. And he'll get out. And we can't let them run the Panama Canal. We built the Panama Canal. Should have never been given to Panama. We should have had it. But we gave it for one dollar. Think of it. They quadrupled in one day. They lifted the fees, which are, you know, pretty big for these massive ships to go through, right? Rather than going around the Cape and through all the tremendous storms, such beauty, such, you know, when you see it's beautiful stuff. But you didn't want to get caught in those storms. Those were storms that wiped out the biggest ships. And we go through the Panama Canal. We built it. And we gave it away for one dollar. Think of that. How stupid are we? We have done the stupidest things in this country. Uh, and now we have a president that can't put two sentences together, can't speak, can't walk, can't talk. I don't think he gets to the starting gate, but these people do miracles. I mean, he, he ran out of his basement and you got away with that one because of COVID. So he sort of got away with it. They cheated on the election. But you have two things that are not very what I started. You know, when I looked at the 51 intelligence agents uh, saying that that was the laptop from hell was Russia disinformation, when I took a look at that, I said, that's a horrible thing. They knew it wasn't. They knew it was not. And by the way, you're talking about cheating on the election. Uh, McLaughlin and Fabrizio, great pollsters, they said a thing like that plus other things meant anywhere from 10 to 17 percent of the vote would change. Whatever happened to Mike Pence? You've always been nice to Pence. I've never heard you criticize Pence. You've defended him in public many, many times. He's out there attacking you. Um, what is that? So Mike wants to run for president. You gotta understand, in my opinion, Mike Pence had the absolute right to send the votes back to the legislatures. Uh, the Democrats and everybody said, you don't have the right. In other words, what I said, is he a human conveyor belt? You mean, if he finds fraud in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, in any of these states, Arizona. He has to send them to Mitch McConnell, right? That's right, sir. Well, if he finds fraud, he has to? Yes, sir. I said, so he's just, so he's a conveyor belt. Boom, put him in. I said, I don't agree with that. And we had some lawyers, not all, we had some lawyers that said, no, you do have the right to send them back to the legislatures to be rechecked. Because if you looked at what went on in Wisconsin, who, by the way, now agree with me, Wisconsin has been virtually, other than the fact they're not allowed to do anything statutorily, but Wisconsin has been, I mean, what they found is incredible. I mean, we won Wisconsin. But Mike Pence had the right, in my opinion, to send them back. Do you ever talk to him now? Uh, no, I haven't spoken to him in a long time. Uh, I was very disappointed in him. I didn't want to do what Thomas Jefferson did. Thomas Jefferson, it was Georgia. And it was, hear ye, hear ye, the great state of Georgia is not. 
capable or allowed to tabulate their votes. And Thomas Jefferson, who was the vice president, said, is Georgia sure that they cannot tabulate their votes? Georgia is sure. He didn't send them back and have them redo it. He said, we will keep the votes of the great state of Georgia for Thomas Jefferson and his president. I didn't ask him for that. Could have done that too, but I didn't. I thought that would be turmoil. Well, I asked him to send him back to his legislature, to the legislatures, you know, in Wisconsin, let's say. But, but why didn't he? I mean, you, you'd worked together for four years. You're the president, he's VP. You're, you say you're aligned on everything. I think he got very bad advice. I, I really do. Now, let me tell you what happened. I sat there with a few people. I think his lawyer was in the room, too. His lawyer was very much against it. There were other lawyers that felt you could do it. It was, it was one of those things. You probably, I think you could have done it. I think you can always do something if you see fraud or if you see problems. But it's very interesting. So after the election was over, the rhinos got together with the Democrats and they redid the election, so you couldn't do it anymore. So then I called the people. I said, so in other words, you're saying I was right. You could do it. Yes, you could do it. In other words, they took the Voting Act and they redid it so the vice president no longer has the power to do what I said he could do. So when that happened, I said, wow. So, And, you know, you'd look some of these Democrats in the eye and they'd say, he has absolutely no right to do it. And immediately after the election, they met rhinos, could name them all, and Democrats, and they approved legislation that takes away the right of the vice president to do it. So I said, ah, so you're saying I was right. The vice president did have the right to do it, and they said, yes, he did. So if you're saying they stole it from you last time, why wouldn't they do the same this time? Oh, well, they'll try. They're going to be trying, yeah. But, and not, not only me, you know. Look, uh, De Sanctis is out. I think he's gone. So he was he was at a level. He's people have figured him out. He's gone. But if somebody else got in, other than me, they'll go at him just as viciously as they did me. These people are sick. Uh, they will go after them. And a lot of people say they won't be able to hold up. I do get credit for holding up quite well. I must tell you. I think it's. Uh, How do you do that? How do you get indicted? You know, every week and stay I know. cheerful. It's. Uh, I think it, it's a lot easier because I'm, I'm so high in the polls because it means the people get it. The people see it's a fraud. The people see it like this horrible district attorney from just a little while ago from essentially Atlanta, that's Fulton County. She said, basically, I don't have any right to challenge an election. Well, what about... Stacey Abrams, what about Hillary Clinton? What about all of these Democrats that are still challenging my election? The same people that are saying he's challenging an election challenged my election. And they did it with slates. They did it with all sorts of things. They were very bad, very bad about it. But basically, they're suing me and they're saying, you don't have any right to challenge. And if you challenge an election, we're going to indict you and put you in jail. So what they're doing is they're really, they've weaponized and, and don't kid yourself, the DOJ and Biden and the whole group, they're watching all of this stuff. They love the local stuff. You know, the DA in Manhattan. Not only that, they put a, one of the DOJ top people into the Manhattan DA's office to run things. They don't even have a case against me. It's not even a case. Everyone says, even the Democrats say, you can't bring these cases. You have no case. The attorney general or the uh, district attorney Fanny, Fanny Willis, in Atlanta. She's getting killed. Basically, she's saying Trump doesn't have the right to, uh, to criticize an election. But you've been around long enough now. You've seen many elections criticized. I mean, Hillary Clinton goes crazy. Every time she talks, she says, he's not the president, Jimmy Carter said. He's not the president. Well, I am the president. Hillary Clinton called me, by the way, at 3.02 in the morning to congratulate me the night of the election. Did her voice crack? Well, her voice was <laughs> it's very different, I will say. I won't get into that. But What do you mean? Her voice was very different. Uh, don't forget, they were all celebrating at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And I came home and I said, you know, I think we won. I felt we won because the rallies are so big. You know, we'd, have, we'd go to Wisconsin and we'd go to uh, Georgia. We'd go to different states. And Michigan, 
We'd have rallies in Pennsylvania with 58,000 people in Butler. And I said, you know, how are we losing this? How do you have a rally where you have from 50 to 100,000 people, many of them, you know, I did seven a day for a couple of days. That's a lot, that's a lot. These are big rallies too. And I didn't hold back. I didn't say, let's make them little, let's do abbreviations, right? But, um, but they challenged the stuff. Yeah. Hillary called, called me up and conceded. Now the word is that ba Obama said you have to do that. But she called up and totally conceded. But now, you know, every time you see her on television, she's saying like, well, she's challenging the election. Do, do you think so that would mean that she should be indicted, but that would mean also that Stacey Abrams in Georgia should be indicted because she still thinks she won the election for governor. She still thinks that. She's never recanted. And do I you th think Stacey Abrams will be indicted for that? No, of course not. She won't be. The Democrats don't get indicted for things like that. They don't get impeached. No, it's, it's a different thing. Is, With that being said, yes. I had great support when they did impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two. Uh, Jim Jordan, the House was fantastic. And actually, the Senate was very good for me. Other than, you know, Mitch McConnell, I think if he had, it's too bad I endorsed him. He was begging. He was going to lose that race, and I endorsed him, and he ended up winning the race because of my endorsement. He was down. He was going to lose to Amy McGrath, she was $90 million in cash, all set to go. She was leading by three. He was going down. I did him a favor, and then three, four months later, he really wanted to impeach me. Uh, he's a bad guy. But, but uh, if you look at what's going on politically, it's so interesting. The level of loyalty is different in politics than it is in normal life, I will say. With that being said, I've had great loyalty also. But uh, the House was fantastic. The Senate was very good. Can, you know, they can, overrode Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell in my opinion, was trying to get senators to impeach me, especially for the second one. And on the first one, he acted very, very slow. He should have gone much faster. But Mitch McConnell wanted to, and the senators went up to him. Guys that are subservient to him because he gives money. You know, he gives them money. He gives them a lot of money. He raises some money and he gives it to them, and therefore they do what he said. That's the only form of leadership he's got. So last question, if you're elected president again, What's your top, your number one priority? When you ran last time, you said, I will build a wall. This time, your bottom line, top promise to the so country. So you can do numerous things at the same time. Of course. But let's say number one is a border and taking hundreds of thousands of criminals that have been allowed into our country and getting them out and bringing them back to their country, Guatemala. By the way, not only the four countries that we think of as neighbors, all over the world. Last month, we had 149 countries represented. Think of it. We had 149 countries represented, Tucker, from places that many people never even heard of coming into our country. And they're coming in from mental institutions, and they're coming in from prisons. They're emptying out their prisons all over South America. They're emptying out their mental institutions. Terrorists are pouring into our country. We have no idea. I had the strongest border in the history of our country, and I built almost 500 miles of wall. You know, they like to say, oh, was it less? No. I built 500 miles. In fact, if you check with the authorities on the border, we built almost 500 miles of wall, and I had another 200 that I was going to build. You know, it's like water. It seeks. And we're going to build another 200. We built it. It was all set to go. All they had to do was install it. It would have taken three weeks. And that's when I found out. I said, I think these people actually want open borders. Um, the first thing I would do would be uh, I would seal up the border good and tight, except for people that want to come in legally. Do you think we're moving towards civil war? There's tremendous passion and there's tremendous love. Uh, you know, January 6th was a very interesting day because they don't report it properly. Uh, I believe it was the largest crowd I've ever spoken before. And you know some of the crowds I've spoken before. And uh, like July 4th on the mall, uh, I think they had a million people there. Uh, but I think that the biggest crowd I've ever spoken before was on January 6th. And people that were in that crowd, a very, very small group of people, and we said patriotically and peacefully, peacefully and patriotically, right? Nobody ever says that. Go peacefully and patriotically. But people that were in that crowd that day, very small group of people, went down there and then you there are a lot of a lot of scenarios that we can talk about but
people in that crowd said it was the most beautiful day they've ever experienced. There was love in that crowd. There was love and unity. I have never seen such spirit and such passion and such love. And I've also never seen simultaneously and from the same people such hatred of what they've done to our country. So do you think it's possible that there's open conflict? We seem to be moving I, I towards don't know. something. I don't know because I don't know what it, you know, I, I can say this. Uh, there's a level of passion that I've never seen. There's a level of hatred that I've never seen. And that's probably a bad combination. Donald Trump, thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. That is a bad combination, by the way. Bad combination. Thank you.